Hey everybody, it's Tuesday, November 14th. It's um, the Chaos Community Weekly Call again. My dog is snoring again, sorry about that. Um, hope everybody's doing good today. The minutes are in the chat and I will share my screen. Can you hear it? Can you hear the snoring? I do. Okay. A little bit, yeah. Yes, I hear that one. Yeah, she's sacked. She goes, I think, for her last chemo tomorrow. I think it's going to be her last one. So, right yeah. On. Um, here's the, here are the minutes. If you have not added your name and you would like to do that and tell us something that makes you laugh, that would be great. Um, let me open this chat here. I put my granddaughter. She was wanting Santa to come. She saw Santa over the weekend um, at a, an event, and she wanted santa to come and so my my daughter and i were facetiming and we said oh he's not ready yet um and my daughter says oh he has to make some toys he still has to make the toys my granddaughter who's two says no he make one toy one elsa dress that's all he has to do is so basically she's saying forget all the other kids he just really needs to make the one dress for her is all he's leaving it. money on the table he's leaving money on the table at that age <laughs> i love i love her she, I love the way she thinks that too already. She's like 100% out for herself <laughs> already. Um, I love these. We've heard some dad jokes and bad jokes as well. Um, what is New York Instagram handle? Oh, I'm going to have to Google that now. Is that is that's pretty good, Sophia? So. Do you have to be in New York to appreciate that or can anybody? Be, um, you might appreciate it more if you live here. It's just a lot of like asinine things you see around you. Um, so I find it amusing because it is a reminder of all the eccentric qualities of the thousands and millions of New Yorkers that live here. Love it. I love it. So as someone from the Midwest, we can appreciate it from afar. Possibly, or you might just think we're all weird here, which is <laughs> maybe true. Oh, trust me. We, we have our level of weird here. I think every place does. They have their own unique flavor of weird. So <laughs> no one is better than the other. It's all the same. Um, okay, I guess we can go ahead. If somebody can just watch for new folks that join, um, that'd be great and just drop the minutes in there. And a quick reminder, this is under the Chaos Code of Conduct. So if you can just keep that in mind as you interact with us here. And of course, if you don't want your camera on, totally fine. You can leave it off. You can chat with us in the chat, mics on or off. However, however you want to interact with us um, is great. We would appreciate it, whatever you want to do. So the first thing on the agenda is just a reminder about uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, about the holiday schedule. So I see next week the app ecosystem I knew about, they were gonna still um, have their meeting on the 21st. I also see that the metrics models wants to go back on. Uh, that can we, yeah, sorry, can we put that one back on? Daniel Iscierto and I would like to would like to have that that one because the the open oiler work is kind of on a analysis is sort of on a short deadline. And this is the only meeting I'll have been able to make because of conference travel. And um yeah. So <laughs> a lot of the participants, to be honest, are outside of the US anyways. So I feel like okay. that one has less impact. Yeah. On I'll I agree. Thanksgiving. Totally fair. We'll do that. Um, I'll also, um, we might want to put a note in that um, Slack channel just to make sure people know that the meeting is going to happen. Because um, I will, I will do that. Okay. And I'll put it in the, in the weekly newsletter, which hopefully I will get out on Friday this time um, for the next week. So yeah, but not everybody reads that. So I just want to make sure that they know. And it'll, it should show up too on the reminder in the general channel that happens every day. But again, no, not everybody looks at that. So thank, thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Um, yeah, happy to do that. Is So the app ecosystem is not the only exception. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we take a, a break at the end of the year, at least for the meetings. Um, work can still happen if you all want to work on things asynchronously over Slack or you know meet amongst yourselves whatever um, but we will not have any chaos meetings and we do that to kind of just protect our community from burning out and let us it lets us come back in the new year with um you know like just a fresh perspective and rejuvenated reset all of those good things so um these are off the calendar for good oh yeah december 11th to january 8th any questions about any of these meetings and any of the cancellations 
Oh, and one more thing. If you have copied things over to your personal calendar, I don't think it will reflect over there when we cancel something on the main calendar. So just double check, just double check our calendar if you're not sure. It's, you know, this is the time of year when it's good to just check between daylight savings and holidays and all this stuff. So yeah, just good to check. Okay, next one is Chaos Africa updates. I do not see Ruth today. Is there someone else, Mary Blessing, maybe? If you, I don't know. I don't want to put you on the spot. I did this last week too. Um, I know that there are some updates with All in Africa, so I didn't know if you want to share those with us. Um, if you're not ready to do so, that's completely valid and totally fine. And I know sometimes Mary Blessing. Wow. Okay. Yeah, good. Oh, good. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, so, yes, we all in Africa. Um, so we have been able to like onboard the 250 participants on Slack and um, he started taking the courses, like many of them are very excited. So um, he started taking the courses. Some of them have really gone far. I think one said he has finished everything. It's just amazing how exciting they are. And um, yeah, we also had a few plans to have like a Twitch stream, but we'll be holding that on to like 2024 because the year is already ending and um, we just want them to like, you know, what's the word now? Like settle in more um, into the program. Um, but again, we are also like planning a hackathon um, with the GitHub team. So that is just like the updates we have so far. Mary Blessing, are the 200 participants on Slack, are they all part of the program? Or are they looking to get involved in the program? Because that's a lot of people. Yeah, there are 250 uh, across um, the five regions in Africa. So yeah, they're all on Slack and they are all participants of the program. Amazing. Yeah. Anyway. And I believe they had uh, roughly, I want to say 700 folks um, express interest in it. So there was a quite a long waiting list. Um, is that right? Is that about right, Mary Blessing? Yeah, over a thousand. Over a thousand. <laughs> interest. Yeah. That's so yeah. many. Okay, cool. So it's Looking very good. Yeah, that's awesome. And for those who don't know what this is, this is a, um, a project that uh, Chaos Africa is working on with the all in folks from GitHub um, to bring just a general introduction to open source to folks who don't know what open source is, don't know how to, don't know what a merge is what a pull request like all of those all of that terminology and all of those things so during the course of this they will have some like hands-on experience and they'll work through some workshops and some um some different modules and things so yeah it's very popular popular so there was a question from Sela in the chat can we duplicate that project with yeah um yes i think that's something that definitely could be a conversation with all in Sela. that's amazing yeah um, I'm just gonna put a little note in. Um, do people do people graduate from this program? Like, do they get like a certificate or something like that? Yeah, yeah, they have to complete um, a certain amount of. They have to complete all the modules and then um, make some pull requests and show like how they've made their pull requests to actual projects. Okay. And, um, I know that this is also kind of mirrors the All-In for Students that All-In has been running in the US. And I know in the All-In for Students, they have to also, um, they are required to attend some hackathons and okay. other like career readiness kind of stuff like that. Too. Okay, but there is kind of a graduation at the yes. end of the program yeah. for the folks that do the work. Yep. Okay. Sally, would you like me to do um, an intro to the All-In folks or what would be the best thing? I think it would be great, yeah. Let's do it. Awesome. Happy to do that. Which and this makes a nice segue into the next <laughs> into the next line on our agenda. I thought I didn't see that they moved you moved it up to I to moved it up. I'm like, <laughs> it seems really sensible up there. <laughs> we don't need to have your intro at the end of the meeting, so <laughs> 
I uh, just wanted to say hi to you all um, and introduce myself a little bit. This is my first community meeting right now. I've been working alongside with Matt, Elizabeth, Sean, and also other folks um, on the DEI side of chaos. And right now what we're trying to do is expand some of the work that we've been doing around DEI, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion practices with the communities to Latin America. So this is a huge task because many people in Latin America or most of the people in Latin America don't really know what chaos is or the work that we've been doing. So we are on the first stage of talking a little bit to the communities to see how they're doing and see what kind of support we can give them in terms of DEI. And also to ask you all if you have any contacts from folks here in the region, regardless of which country in Latin America, that would be super helpful. Send it over to me. I'll write my email there on the notes. And if you have any idea or anything, please send it over. And also, um, my pronouns are she, her, um, based in Costa Rica, in case you need to know like time zones or stuff, CUTC minus six. Um, I'm not a technical person per se. Um, what else can I say? Oh, I work for the Wikimedia Foundation as a global DI senior specialist. <laughs> I'm also part of the OpenStreetMap community. I'm also part of the OSGEO community. I'm more into the mapping world for the past couple of years, also because of my PhD research is based there. By the way, Matt, Elizabeth, and Sean, I already got my defense date December 14th. Awesome. Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> Um, and I, I, that's, that's that or anything else. If you have any questions, please. I also don't want to monopolize the conversation. So I just wanted to introduce myself and also for you to know that like I'm here, I'm here and I'm in the region. So I will just add, so is amazing. And I've learned so yes. much <laughs> over the years. So thank you for being here. It's just awesome to have you in this meeting. Yeah, we are super happy to see you and to have you here like ugh, so good um, i'm so you... nervous but i'm so happy <laughs> <laughs> no don't no, don't be nervous um are you in our slack you are right? no no, no not on this one i wanted to ask you for that yeah oh yeah I, we can get you in there definitely okay let me just make sure if i can spell my name yeah, Casella, we have like even in Slack, we have a Chaos Africa channel, and we could certainly have yeah, the Latin America as well. Yeah, exactly. And also, if you if any of you is like curious about the work that we're doing, because we're also expanding the work that we're doing in Africa and also in the Balkans and also in Latin America, if you're curious about the project, please reach out to me, and I can walk you through like the objectives that we want to have throughout the two years that we're going to be working around this, um, what kind of actions, activities we want to have, and how can we also like make you part of it. So that would be great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Very exciting. Does anyone have any questions right off? Not to put Sally back on the spot, but you're back on the spot. <laughs> Only if there's a question. If there's no question, then you're fine. <laughs> okay. Looks like no questions. So yes, awesome. Thank you so much. I'm looking for, I don't see Anita on the channel. I'm going on to the next one here. I don't see Anita on here, but if you have not read this article, this is amazing work, absolutely amazing work. And for some reason, I can't open the, why can't I open the link? It was showing up, it was below. Oh, but. <laughs> how, does, how does Google and browsers work? I don't know. Um, this is mostly the result of Anita's amazing research that she was doing around the DEI metrics and all the interviews that she did um, with help from some others in the chaos community. but. Um, this is a fantastic article and it's very thorough and very um, just really awesome. 
I was going to let her speak to it a little bit, but I don't see her on the call. So everybody just go read this. Um, it's really important and very, very well done. So kudos to Anita for this. And this went on the chaos blog this morning. So um, if you, we, we did post it on LinkedIn. If you're on LinkedIn and you want to help boost that, it'd be amazing. We'd love that. Well, she, I, she and I were chatting. Do So she was looking at possibly also posting this to opensource.net, but they have, um, word limits of 2600 or no wait sorry 1300 and this is like 2600 so does anybody have thoughts on other without cutting the article like other places where this might go i don't think opensource.com is still accepting articles are they i don't think they are i don't know yeah. oh, I Don's so right now. yeah i had heard that too yeah they're not I had good experience with, with opensource.net and they're um they're also willing to break things up into multiple oh, I think good. like a series. So yeah. I know that they have a suggested word limit, but um I, I wouldn't I wouldn't um like not do it because of the word limit. I would reach I out to them because they're really interested in getting more articles. And yeah, I'm sure that they could break it up into a series. Okay, I'll let her know. That's great. That's a great piece of advice. Thank you. Any other um, comments or discussion around this? Any Anything from those who helped work on this with Anita? Anything you want to add on her behalf? Okay. All right. Well, yes, definitely go read that and boost it if you can. And if, it, if you think of somewhere else where it would be appropriate or um, other places we can submit it, um, definitely let us know. Let Anita know on that. Or probably just Anita would be good. Not to give Matt more work, but <laughs> send everything to Matt all the time because he doesn't have much to do. I'll do it. Okay. I just sent a note to Anita recommending the um, and breaking it up into a, possibly a series. Um, that's a real, that's great. Awesome. All right, let's go on to the next one then. Um, I brought this back up from last week. I sure. just wanted to bring this up. Um, I, I have had um, someone reach out and I wasn't sure where to send them. So I'm wondering if we can open an issue in that metrics models repo and just start to kind of collect and assign people or like tag them or somehow keep them together all the people who want to volunteer for this because I don't know what I don't know what needs to be done or the format needs to go in or anything like that I need I think the next thing I just need to reach back out to Jory at the LF just to make sure things are so I feel like I'm waiting to hear something back from the LF so I could just reach out to her again okay okay so we're kind of waiting for them so I there's think, nothing I, I, I think so that's what it feels like right now to me Okay. I wonder if this would be better in the community repo because I mean, the metrics models are a piece of it, but it feels like a, like a community wide effort. That's just just a suggestion. I, I don't know. I'm also not involved in this at all, so I could be wrong. <laughs> and Sean has his hand raised and then puts in chat that we could create a GitHub project. That's a great idea. Um, Sean, you want to go ahead? Tell us more about that. Just, um, I think based on the materials that have been shared so far, we know what the to-dos will be, at least at a high level for, for doing this. So they could be, enter I could enter them in, in a GitHub project. Um, and to John's suggestion, perhaps in the community repo, it sounds like. Yeah, that seems, that makes sense to me in the community repo. Yeah, I don't disagree with that a suggestion at all. Mm -hmm. I guess the one thought I would have is um, as we make the changes of the metrics models, you know, like get them in the ISO format. Well, that, yeah. I assume that'll take the place of the existing markdown files for metrics models. Like we wouldn't have a metric model in the current markdown and an ISO representation of that model, or would we? I think we have to do one to know the answer to that question okay. because the standards documentation is sometimes not human consumable in the same way that uh like the way that we present them and by that okay. i mean they're just not easy to read like a standard it reads kind of yeah 
Okay. So I don't know until we we don't know until we do one. Is what I would say. Okay. At least in draft form. Okay. Okay, that would be great. And then um, anybody who does want to volunteer, um, we can just point, kind of point them to that repo and just say, watch this, watch this right here, I think would be good. And if anybody is on this call and wants to help out with it, basically, like we were just saying, it's um, us re reformatting some of our metrics models files into something that is fits the ISO standard so that we can submit them or to be official standards right it's not about creating new content or creating new metrics models it's taking the existing content and really just putting it into an iso template is what it comes down to okay awesome i'm gonna do ai sean okay cool thanks everybody anybody have questions on this What's ISO? Uh, International Standard or Organization, is that right? Yes. Yeah, so they're kind of like the, yeah, there you go. They're kind of like the, the group that um, gets to decide what's official and what's not. <laughs> so um, we're trying to get some of our metrics models as official standards that other places would use in a more official capacity instead of just kind of uh, more, you know, like an insight into your community. This would be like an official official thing. So yeah, to be recognized by governments and things. Yep. Thanks, Alona. I have a question. Yeah, go for it. So in terms of ISO centralization, so if somebody tomorrow refers to that model or uses it, do they have to be follow that particular set of uh, specification that we are going to do in the ISO? Like what I know in ISO is like you follow certain conditions to be that, but here we allow the open source community to customize based on their needs. So how it is different from that aspect? Like here we are giving, okay, here's a set of a standard metric as a model. You can tweak it based on your needs or uh, your company needs or some uh, requirements. But in terms of the standards, how they can manipulate that is what I was just wondering. And somebody shared some light on that. I don't have an answer for that, Vinod, but I suspect that'll be something that I would talk to folks at the LF about. So there are a couple things. One is uh, it was well received because it's a more of a definitional standard, not necessarily a process standard. So that works in our favor, according to the folks I had talked to at the LF. And then um, in terms of like, I think, Part of your question was like, this is something that could be changed over time because it is an open source product. Like, how do we address that? Um, I don't know, but I'm sure they'll <laughs> they'll tell me what tell me how that works. Yeah, that is exactly my question was uh, like, how do we address? Because open source has always been evolving. Like, you built on the top of other on the top of other so. And yeah. in the standardization the domain, it's like, here's the standard, either you update the standard, bring like a uh, standard one, standard two, and so on. Was no, I, I do know that as part of that conversation, there was like discussion that chaos will need a commitment to modify and maintain these metrics models. So it, it may be just along those lines, you know, that here's standard in this version. And then as we make changes that are fundamental to the models, we have to resubmit as a renewal or something like that. I don't know what the process is, but maybe something like that. Okay. And I see Rhoda and Mary Blessing have also volunteered to help. Um, Gary White also volunteered to help. So um, once we have that project, uh, I'm just gonna, mark you down here so we make sure we tag you Thanks. 
Anybody else can add their name to this list right here if you want. And we'll tag you once that project board is up and running. Ooh, Salona dropped an awesome link in here. So I'm going to copy this and put this in here. Um, just, uh, let's see here. Just for future reference. Thank you, Salona. It's perfect. If anybody wants to look at what that looks like. Yes, we do need an open source tool to, to change Markdown to this. <laughs> You're getting right on that, aren't you, Salona? <laughs> you know me. Well, we're about, we're it's not officially launched said yet, but I am working on doing a new thing for the open source governance standard, and we're going to be doing it at EFF at um, Eclipse Foundation now, and nice. doing it open source and all that. So I'm going to be researching a lot of this. So I'll bring that knowledge over to you guys as I go through it. Awesome! That would be fantastic. Anything else on this topic before we move along? Okay, um, I see a few uh, other things. Badging updates. Uh, can I provide them here? It depends on sure. what you're going to say. I guess. Why not? <laughs> Go for it. We can we can probably just say like other people are helping out with badging. So this well, is no why don't you give the update, Elizabeth? You can <laughs> be more graceful than I am. Just gonna say um, that we do have other folks that are interested in contributing to the badging um, project, which for the project badging project, I should say, right here. We'll just oh <laughs> the Papa project. Um, so for those who don't know, obviously we've had event badging for a long time. Um, we are now dipping our toes into project badging and we finished the pilot. We are going to be um, moving into production. So that's kind of where we are right now. And we do have some uh, folks at GitLab who are also helping out with this. So right now, um, the, the way the pilot worked is that you would um, put in your GitHub handle. And so the, the GitLab folks are also helping us um, allow folks with GitLab projects to be able to log in with their GitLab and, and then get the badge. So that's just kind of something that we're working on with them. So thanks to them, they've been wonderful and um, been submitting PRs like crazy. So they are great. Thank you to the GitLab engineers and folks there who have been really come into the DEI meetings and helping out. We really appreciate you. And we do have um, still some projects that are working on their DEI.md file. I know Django is one. Um, there's another one that I can't recall that I need to follow up with. Um, but so if you do, are, if you are a part of another open source project and you want to try to get a badge as a pilot, um, we're still open to that. So um, just let us know. We could drop in the link somewhere in this in this um, agenda. So yeah, I think that about sums it up right now. We are working. I can also say we are working on uh, updating the the way the badging website will look and it will um, the event badging website. I know we've been working on that for a while, but that's kind of starting to come together a little bit more. So um, that's also a project that we uh, we want to start really focusing on too. So yeah. Thanks. What's up? Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Anybody have questions on that? Yoki, we'll go on. Um, meeting with Sona type. I don't know who put that in here. Me. So Don and I just got off a, a call with um, some folks at Sona type. So they have that report there that they do, software supply chain, the state of software supply chain, something they release every year. Anyway, this is just a conversation that stemmed from the member summit in Monterey. And so just if there's any way that we can have a point of connection with chaos and the report. So I just wanted to let you know that that's kind of what's happening there. And something may come of it, something may not come of it, but I'm just, I'm pretty excited about the possibility at least to be part of that conversation. It's a cool report. Anybody that's using this word right here, labyrinthine, amazing. Labyrinthian. Labyrinthian. Labyrinthian is how I'd say it, but I don't know if that's right. 
uh, labyrinthian. No, I'd say it. I don't know. It's a great word. I'm going to use it now every day. Yeah. And I then <laughs> I did the next one too, which was just common updates. So in common, um, I just, I think Georg is on here still. You know that list you sent us from App Ecosystem for metrics? Yes, I do. So we, we've started to work on that just in terms of either adding, like thinking about how we can add either filters to existing metrics or perhaps the creation of new metrics. So we have started working on that. So that's moving forward. I just wanted to let you know. Um, you. Yeah. And then we're also working, we're taking a look at metrics models in particular, the ones that have been published. And the idea here is that some of the metrics models may have a lot of metrics, which I think kind of defeats the purpose sometimes of metrics models. So just thinking about maybe what the really key metrics are that help move a metric model forward, you know, the, those four or five metrics that would be most sensible. Um, we're also, we also talked about kind of highlighting the metrics that are already published in chaos. So if you haven't noticed in some of the metrics models, there might be say nine metrics that comprise a metric model. You know, like take a look at these metrics to understand this particular issue. Um, but in those, sometimes in those situations, like five of the metrics have not been published by chaos. So they just, they're kind of a, a line with no link to a metric. So trying to prioritize or kind of give more light to the metrics that have already been published in chaos. That's it. Questions on that? It's the, it's just, it's like detail work. I just wanted to let people know that this is happening. <laughs> and this is kind of what common does is kind of, kind of reflective detail work. Okay. ChaosCon updates. Do we want us, do we need to meet with ChaosCon folks? That's probably a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing. Um, for those who don't know, when we are planning a chaos con, like we have one coming up in February, sometimes we will chop this meeting up and end it early so that those who are planning the chaos con can have that time back and use that to plan. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> so, so in case you uh, didn't understand that, we're, we're stopping this meeting right now to use this last 13 minutes for chaos con. So if you're not planning chaos con with us, you are free to go and you should have a wonderful rest of your day. If you are on the ChaosCon committee, then you can stick around. And I will stop the recording. <laughs>